talking about the difference between exploration as an activity and science as an, as an activity. I have seen a number of organizations that, that spend their time doing geology, doing mapping, when one drill hole could test the anomaly and, and they could either go on to success or, or walk away. Yeah, that's not to say uh, that, that you don't need to know the geology uh, and you need to know uh, the kind of deposits you might, you have reason to expect there. But beyond, beyond a certain point, uh, once, once you, you have the geologic, geologic setting right and you know the kind of deposits you can expect there, then you should become an explorer. And if, if it takes maybe some geophysical work because you need to know depth, say, uh, or if you're looking for something with a, for a deposit that, that has magnetic properties, you can do some geophysics. But, but the only way to find out what's down there is to drill the hole. I was on one project where the geologist on the project, who was a bright guy, said, we ought to be able to, to model this uh, with geophysics and, and we won't drill, we won't, don't need to drill a hole. And, and he really believed this, and, you know? It just isn't so, <coughs> generally speaking. I published an SEG newsletter in uh, 1998, uh, the Ore Finders, and, and I laid out a, a, a number of what I call exploration canons that, uh, that I think are, are very imp are important for people doing exploration. Uh, and, and this, what I've been talking about, I think is at the lead. If you know the difference between exploration as an activity and science as an activity, you're 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 going to be ahead of the be ahead of the game. The next in importance that I would say is uh, <clears throat> the best odds are in the shadow of the head frame. Ore deposits are not are not formed in isolation. Usually, when there's a mineralizing event with favorable rocks and so on, there, there, are, there are a number of deposits. And, and we see this in, in mineral districts. Of course, you also need, in order to discover a deposit, if you, you know what, you're, what kind of deposit you're looking for in any one area, you need to have some concept whether in the structural setting that you're looking at, there is room for the ore. Can you expect to, to find uh, a, a deposit uh, that's large enough to, to be ore? To make an ore body, you've got to drill ore, ore holes. If you, if you have a, a, a drill hole that, that uh, is, uh, is below grade and thickness, say, if you can't offset that hole with a number of others, there's no ore body there. But it's amazing how many, how many people drill and, and drill mainly mineralization which you can't put through the mill. When a mineral place starts, say there's a, there's a, uh, a discovery made, as there, as there was in the Northern Territory in, the, in Australia when this big uranium discovery was, was made. If you want to get into that play, don't fiddle around mapping. Get the ground and study it later. Another aspect of, of uh, discovery 
is uh, what I call go for the jugular. If you trust your geology, go in and, and give it all you've got to make the discovery. Now, and, and that's, uh, that's especially important because, as I say, if, if you're uh, in a, a minerals play, in, in a virgin area, if you can't see improvement as you go along, uh, you, you ought to consider seriously about getting out. I think that uh, a lot of companies will spend a long time uh, doing good technical work, scientific work, but if they don't improve uh, their, their chances, their odds, uh, time to get out, go, go someplace else. I've emphasized drilling and, and uh, I, I can't emphasize that uh, enough. However, uh, to, get in, to get in close, uh, I'll quote uh, uh, Charlie Park at, at Stanford, uh, geology gets you, gets you in, in close. And remember, IQ gets you there and BQ finds it.